for joining me. I'm Scotty D. And I've got this very fancy GNL ASAP base that needs a little help. As you can see, it's pretty sparkly. And it is a heavy mofo. I'm going to weigh this thing, see how much it weighs. Serial number B033602. So B stands for base. 33 comma 602 33 thousandth instrument made it's not that old um, in a video previously last month or two I did a tale of three GNL bases two of them were from 81 82 and one was 1990 I'm gonna guess this one's 95 and I'm gonna guess this body is northern ash wood because it's so heavy holy cow um, the the relief in the neck is a little too much it's uh, like 12 thousandths of an inch I'd like to get it down to about 8 and the action is 7 64ths I'd like to get that down to 5 64ths at the 12th fret so let's see if we can do that by adjusting the saddles and the truss rod if not we'll have to do a little neck shimming there's also the micro tilt function here that I hate and we'll see when we take the neck off exactly what year it is what kind of wood this is and if the micro tilt is engaged or not but I can already tell you by putting a straight edge here and taking a five thousandths feeler gauge which I have over here that we've got a little bit of a relief here between the 11th and 21st fret. Well, you shouldn't have relief in that area. It should be dead flat. But as you can see, it's not dead flat. That means that the end of the fretboard has a bit of a ski jump. It could be a lot of work, but it's not like killing goats. Another thing that could be way off here is the intonation. Typically, the lowest string is going to be the furthest one back, but we can see here that the E string is more forward than the A string. This one seems to take a giant leap forward, and this one might be okay, although he did say that he thought one of the uh, screws wasn't long enough to get the intonation right where it needed to be, so we'll have to check that. and might need to fabricate a new screw for him, but we'll see. This one has that point that the uh, 1981 and 1982 models were missing. The original headstock design, if you watch my other video, was missing that little point right there. And uh, folklore has it that uh, Fender Instruments sued GNL, which is Leo Fender's company, for the headstock ripoff. And they added this point to uh, get out of the lawsuit. So this screw was long enough. It intonates, just had to go forward a little, but this screw is too long and the springs were jammed down inside of there and they got a little damage. So I'm going to cut off the spring and I'm going to cut off the screw so that it can be shorter than the A. Sometimes memory serves us wrong because the customer said he thought one of these was, wasn't was long enough when in fact it's the E that uh, needs to be shortened. It's over nine and a half pounds, which isn't even as heavy as the 89 GNL base that I owned that had a maple body. That's another thing this could be, is a hard maple body. So that's actually a better guess. An educated guess would be that this is a maple body. Let's see if the e electronics work.
Vietnam South E24 in front of D Lane. We're told we're looking about 15 minutes from Vietnam Veterans Boulevard via 65 South. That was awkward. But not as awkward as an impromptu prayer meeting with Julie Dohagey. Next, I'll loosen these strings and see what kind of uh, action we can get out of this uh, truss rod nut. difference. I'm actually a little a little flat now intonation wise at the 12 fret. I need to move this forward. It's kind of squished. Kind of difficult here. Oh, these springs, they want to get uh, mashed into the threads of the screw. All right, jeez. All right, on to the truss rod. I always loosen the strings completely before adjusting the truss rod. Also, I forgot to mention, but there's a little uh, grub screw on this side of the bridge that holds all of the uh, saddles in place. You have to loosen that thing before adjusting the saddles, and it's a 5 64ths imperial sized hex wrench after I you know after you set all your intonation you probably want to tighten that back up so the grub screw doesn't wiggle itself out and then you lose it but yeah just a note just snug you don't need a wrench on it real hard some guys really love to reef down on everything we don't need to reef down on this is not an auto this is not an automobile it's just a freaking piece of wood. It's a stick of wood, guys. You gotta be good to your wood. And while I have those hex wrenches out, this is a eighth inch hex. I just wanna give this about an eighth of a turn. a deep that's a deep socket I don't know if that was quite an eighth of a turn but let's get okay I think that might do it Checking that with an eight, eight thousandths of an inch feeler gauge, and that is 
We're at about eight or seven thousandths. I check both sides. I check it with the eight. No. So I've got eight thousandths on the base and about six thousandths on the treble. That's good. That's actually really good. Let's see if I can get the action down. Actually, it looks like it might be five thousandths on the treble. Just barely five thousandths. So we got seven thousandths and five thousandths. I'm happy with that. And then, as far as the action goes, that may have lowered it. A skosh. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, we got six sixty-fourths now. Five sixty-fourths on the treble. So we're there. I can lower that just a tiny bit and I think I think that'll do it. Back to the five sixty-fourths wrench for the saddle height adjustment screws. I'll just give those a minor tweak downward. That one's not moving. But these ones, these ones came down. Maybe we should still take the neck off and take a look and see what year it is. All right, so here we can see that it was, uh, the year was 2000. 2000, April and March. And the wood, yeah, would be maple or alder. It's possible for me to really tell but the micro tilt is not engaged much at all really no big deal there I don't think it's been used to the extent where it's damaged the neck or you know deformed the end of it and caused a ski jump but that was the great mystery mystery solved and here's a look at that grub screw I was talking about for the saddle lock. It's kind of a saddle-like locking thing. It has a nylon end on this side and it pushes up against that g-string and it squishes them all together inside the bridge. All right, so it didn't need to do anything about that ski jump or that micro tilt. Just really it was the intonation and the truss rod. So. Like, comment, and share. It really helps. Catch you later.